everybody here for a quick conversation with John Haig. John, how's it going? It is fabulous in, in uh, Northland. It's a, a balmy five. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. It's been uh, it's been a little bit cooler here in Florida. Um, we've dipped down into the 40s in the last Oof. couple days. Uh, but you know, by noon it's up to 70 and sun is shining. So yeah, that's a beautiful I, thing. Hopefully that makes you feel a little bit. I'm better. glad some place has got some warmth <laughs> going on right now. It's just in the freeze. Yeah. Well, it's good. Uh, good to connect with you. It's been a minute since we last talked. I don't know. When's the last time uh, I had seen you probably at one of the, one of the last, events in like 2019 it's probably been so yeah, Matt, i would say um, that's true hope hope everything is going well for you it how's is. uh how's the start of 2022 been it feels like i got blown out of a cannon it's just been crazy <laughs> um i've been been very fortunate for the first part of 2020 and that, or 2022 and it kind of the last quarter of 2021 was also just a mess so um Good stuff. I mean, a lot of lot of business, a lot of uh, involvement with a lot of different things, and um, it's exciting what's coming up. For sure. Well, good to glad glad to hear that. Um, I guess maybe we could just start with you know just if you could give us a quick introduction to yourself, and then we'll we have kind of a, a, a quick topic that we wanted to hit on, but maybe you could just start with a, an intro to yourself. Sure. Um, I have been in business aviation side of the house since 1984 um, was a maintenance tech uh, with a large MRO and then moved on to a corporate flight department. Um, and then in 2016, um, the flight department shut down, which um, in some world, some people's eyes was a, is a bummer, but in my eyes, I thought it was a door opening wide. So um and I, I and I ended up starting my own business and as a maintenance consultant and project manager and business aircraft. And um, I've been very fortunate in my career that I've been involved with a lot of different uh, committees and things like that. So I've worked with the FAA um, in some wiring um, interconnect systems they were all worried about and been involved with MBA. Um, a maintenance committee for uh, since like 2004 so sure. and oems and a lot of other things so it's been a kind of a, a nifty ride cool and how's the how's the i know it, it's been now a little while since you've you've kicked off this uh you know your own business but how's that journey been for you um you know i i, I i'm again very fortunate i was able to um get a large client, uh, bring back leased aircraft. Um, and so I've had a steady business. Um, and then, then in the last probably about year or year and a half, um, I, I've been trying to get some side business. I'm actually an aircraft appraiser, got certified to do that. And so I've, you know, I've tried to diversify a little bit because, you know, sooner or later things kind of doors will shut again. You still want to live. So, um, sure. But in the last year and a half, it just the, the the outside interest and outside companies have been getting a hold of me, and so so I think on the business side, it's been a slow but steady uptick, um, and yeah. to an uptick right now that it's you know it's just amazing, um, and I'm sure. and now I'm starting to think about well I either got to bring somebody on or I gotta I gotta just back <laughs> off and. You know, right now my my HR guy is not into having other people. <laughs> the HR guy being you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I get in trouble with myself, I just look in a mirror and yell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. How how do you see the? You know, I, I know that end of twenty twenty one was just crazy with the number of um, transactions that were going through. How, how do you see uh, this year playing out? Do you see any like slowdown happening or you think it's it's still going to be pretty crazy for the next year? Right now, I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward crazy. Um, yeah, definitely for the first and second quarter. Now, things may slow down. Sure. Um, interest rates go up and a few other odds and ends. Um, but right now, it's just um, 
people are still buying and and you know the market is so hot that most of the airplanes aren't really coming up in a on the market um right and that's been you know for somebody that's looking for an airplane it, it's a problem um because really what's left is there's a reason they're left right they're probably not sure the, the top 10 percent of the aircraft top. right Sure. So hopefully yeah. it keeps right on going. I know I've talked to quite a few brokers and they're kind of excited about it, but you know, we'll see, yeah. we'll see what happens um, in the near term, but um, right sure. now it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll, we'll see, but yeah, I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon, but um, well, anyway, what we wanted to get into today was around some of the stuff going on with 5g and uh, I know that this this has been a pretty hot topic over um, over the last two weeks as uh, the cell providers are looking to roll out this new, um, I guess, frequency, you could call it, or spectrum of frequency. And, um, you know, there was a lot of concern over how this was going to affect uh, aviation. And uh, we know that based on uh, some of the studies done, that there is an effect on the altimeters of, uh, of a lot of aircraft out there. And so, you know, I wanted to, wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, what, what you think is going on, how this impacts, um, you know, I guess maybe a little bit on how it impacts commercial aviation, but more on the side of business aviation and maybe... Uh, rotor operators like, you know, medevac and utilities and things like that. Wanted to get a little bit of your view on on kind of where we stand on this topic. Yeah, I, I'd be quite honest with you. Within, it's been within the last couple of weeks that I've found this subject to be concerning and to a point where I did a, a some research. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a subject matter expert by any choice. Sure. But I think it's um, it's amazing that that uh, some of our federal bureaucracy, uh, it feels almost like they didn't talk, right? So um, the radio altimeters are, have a specific bandwidth and it had that specific bandwidth since um, the early 70s. And and then they looked at, you know, and then recently, it actually started in 2015. I just read a little article about that. But the yeah. FCC went to go and... Um, sell some more bandwidth and, you know, do the 5G thing, which is, you know, as a large consumer of telecommunication, um, you know, I'm pretty excited about that in, in, in several different reasons. But when I when you kind of look at the frequencies, the frequencies bump it up against the radio altimeter. And mm-hmm. that to me is that's the problem. You know, one, how did we get this far? with with selling frequencies that are yeah. you know i mean within 220 megahertz of where we're at now on the radio altimeter sure and and i'm i'm lost to how that can happen i'm lost to the communication side of it um the upside i get or the 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 positive or some i'm not even sure what this is but um it does sure. look like the faa um rapidly has been going through aircraft systems and right now they're at the commercial sides at like 90%. Yeah. Yeah. But if you look at the, you look at it from a business aviation standpoint, which is more my concern. Um, right. Really. There's only one aircraft that is used in business aviation currently that is approved. Hmm. Okay. And, and, and this is the part that um, this is the, some of my uh, problem areas is that, I understand that the 121 side is an important group and does move a lot of the public around. And I do understand they need to be really good at what they do. And, and the safety factor needs to be at a, a rate that, yeah. you know, that's just the way it is. However, um, there are probably two to two and a half times more aircraft on the business aviation side. So, I know that they'll get to it, but we're still flying and we're flying more right. than we've flown in, you know, we're, we're back to 2019 numbers and, and exceeding that. 
and yet it just isn't a priority. So two problems I, you know, I see right now is FCC and the FAA were in discussion, but I don't know how. Until recently, it hasn't it, it hasn't really been enough, right? Because otherwise, you wouldn't you wouldn't allow that to happen. Um, mm-hmm. And and then I'm glad the airlines are getting through this, and I'm glad they got the ninety you know they got ninety percent of their OEMs and types um, done. But what about what's the next step for us on the business side? Sure. And that one is a, a large concern. I, I did a little bit of reading this morning as I've got access into Gulfstream's uh, site and just kind of wanted to get an OEM's opinion and what mm-hmm. the, the fix is or if they've got a fix. And, and it, it actually should think, or I, 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 should say, I should say, I actually believe that the fix for uh, the o, Gulfstream as an OEM really is going to be um, fairly easy um, and it's just going to bypass um, uh, box in on the radial altimeter, in which that is going to allow it to kind of get rid of all that spurious stuff. And that's really kind of the problem, right? You got all this, you know, nothing is perfect in the world. Mm-hmm. 4.2 to, you know, 4.4, I think is the mega 4.2.414 gigahertz is, is that is where the radial altimeter is. But as a maintenance tech, I can tell you, I've seen altimeter, radio, radio altimeters just kind of go off the beaten path because of high power underneath your concrete. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so having those frequencies so close with five G, just it's just something that makes me kind of want to kick back and think about that for a little Nervous. bit. Nervous, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. It's there. It, it's deployed around the world. There's 40 countries. What the mm-hmm. difference was or is, and and this is again, I'm one of them. What are we doing? Um, is that they went to a little lower frequency for the 5G, and they actually looked at airports. So, mm-hmm. so antennas are, you know, not pointing toward an approach in, and this is really the problem: is the approach in of this. Um, making sure that you know ground is ground, and the pilots know that it's ground, and there's a you know a, quite a few systems attached to that. So they've they've sure. they've moved their antennas. They've done a lot of things to stay out of the approach path, and yet I, I went by O'Hare the other day, and I pay attention now to cell towers, and right off the end of the freaking runway, not not very far away from the end of the runway, here's a freaking big old tower. And I thought, oh, mm. you know, this is exactly a problem. You know, fog right. and rain and snow and things that are important for the pilot to have every piece of data they can have and have it correct is a uh, sure is something. And and so now where we stand right now is the FAA is saying that there's, you know, ninety percent of the commercial fleet, which is going to be, you know, all of your Boeing, you know, 737s, 777, 757, 787s, 787s, all... 777s are not. Yeah. Are oh, they're not. not okay. approved along with um um uh, 747. A... Okay. As of I think it was 2 days ago is the page that I was looking at on the FAA site regarding this topic. It said it was Oh, okay. Um but it yeah, I, that, I'm just going off of what I'm seeing yeah. from the FAA site from the 25th of January. Okay. Um, yeah. So those maybe they've they've updated it since you've looked at it, sure. but um, also included most of the Airbus models, CRJs, um, and uh, ATRs, which you know it, covering all of those aircraft covers the the majority of the fleet, but on the commercial side. And so now, you know, as we're looking at the, the business aircraft and the aircraft that, you know, there's plant, you know, thousands and thousands of aircraft that are not addressed in, you know, what the FAA has, has covered so far, how should, I guess, first question is how should operators be, uh, looking at this rollout? What, what should they be, I guess, concerned about and how should they be, um, how should they be tweaking their operations to ensure they're not going to be impacted by this? 
So number one, the FAA came out at the end of the year with a couple of ADs for transport category aircraft and also rotocraft. So um, it is a AFM and RFM um, update, which basically tells the, the uh, flight crews to look at your NOTAMs. And sure. they have a list of airports that are that are involved with this. I, I think they're somewhere around 70 some that are big impacts. Um, and they also talk about um, approaches that you shouldn't use. Mm -hmm. And so the, a, a flight crew is re the, the operation is going to be some impact. Cause if you look at the list of airports, you know, we're talking about um, some pretty heavy business aviation airports, you know, um, White Plains, New York, and and even O'Hare. There's a lot of a lot of transportation in and out of there with corporate flights. So they're going to have to be very conscious of what is um, going on and you know the type of approach that they're going to have to do. If it's a low visibility, you probably aren't going to be able to get in there. So what is your what's your backup plan? And that you know mm -hmm. that's a normal function sure. of a flight department. Sure. You know, it's okay. Sure. I can't get in the I can't get in the St. Louis Lambert, but I can get into Chesterfield. So mm -hmm. there, and and it and the the impact to the passengers is that you will you know they're going to need to be able to be transported on the other side of this. So having having multiple paths are going to be so important, I think, going forward. Sure. And then from from the OEM side, and you had mentioned, you know, you were looking at some things regarding uh, re like regarding Gulfstream. Do you think the path there is going to be do we do you expect to see ADs uh, that come out to address this problem, I like with actual work to the aircraft? I think that the OEMs are are very well. I know that all the OEMs are very aware of this. I think what the biggest yeah. deal is that they're going to have to come up with fixes. And, you know, like I read this one this morning about with the Gulfstream, you know, they're holding off just a tad just to see what, what we're going to see. And then they'll come out with a, um, a uh, ASC on that or a CB or whatever okay. it ends up being. Yeah, sure. And there is the potential of another um, AD um, manufacturer specific but I think what, mm -hmm. what really is going to happen is that the two ADs that came out are going to have alternate means of compliance. Mm -hmm. And the alternate means of compliance will be I'm going to install ASC 1114 and gotcha. you know, you're going to sign that off as, as the alternate means. But that's another problem, you know, which I don't know that everybody really thinks about because an AD is truly a mini regulation, right? Right. And, and the FAA can't mandate without having an AD. And if you do an AMOC, technically, you need to go to your lo local FISDO and tell them that you're putting this in. And from a sales transaction point of view, once their plane is transacted, then the new owner needs to be aware and needs to get that into wherever That's FISDO right. they're at. So, right. So, you know, there's there's some there's some slippery slopes and not that there sure. aren't slippery slopes and everything. <laughs> sure. And then I guess, you know, there's, there's obviously a miss here in regards to communication between, uh, the different government agencies that are kind of responsible for this, I guess in regards to, either at an operator level or, you know, an industry organization level, whether it's, you know, MBAA or um, NATA. Uh, how, how do you think, you know, has this been something that's been on the operator and, and organization's radar? Um, or is this something that's kind of slipped by? Because it seems like a big thing that, you know, has just popped up now and, um, it's kind of surprising everybody. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I read a little bit of MBA's um, facts for FG, or 5G. Um, I think there's been a great deal of work done prior to this because, you know, it, the discussion with the FCC started in 2015. Um, right. And whoever approved such things I went right down the line and yes, we're going to go do that. And then they sold it, you know, 
I think that the alphabet groups have been very involved. What I don't think was the communication from alphabet groups and federal bureaucracies back to operators and probably in, in some a- aspect, the public, right? The only reason we really made this happen sure. is the media started covering this, right? Which right. doesn't mean that they understand what all this means, but right. it did make people aware. And by the, you know, mm-hmm. if we're at the end of 2021 and having this conversation and whoa, it started in 2015, you know, it looks like they have done a lot of pre-work. Unfortunately, nobody on the federal side was paying enough attention to that because they kept on going down the path. Right. You know, I, I'm not sure why you couldn't have brought the bandwidth down a little bit that they sold off. Um, but I, I feel better about some of the research I've done about the fact that at least they were talking about this. Um, RTCA right. did a very large um, study back in 2020. Um, and it's, it's a pretty amazing document. It's a really great thing if you need to take a nap you know, right before bed, you can read about four pa- paragraphs and pass <laughs> out. But what it really does show is that there was a lot of research, and their and their their some of their conclusions should have actually been um, more of a um, more of a. They should have been able to think this through through FCC and FAA and right and, and I just that that's the thing that frustrates me it's so much is that I wish that that would have been such a more or should have been a should have been thought out as a rollout right uh, sure and I don't really don't know that we're even not sure that we're even got there yet you know mm-hmm. I know they rolled it out 19 was you know January 19th they off they go but you right. know, all that stuff getting to that. I mean, the last four weeks when it became an issue or bigger issue, um, it just feels like my biggest feeling is that we're getting a lot of finger pointing. Um, right. And, and I, and I mean, not, that, not trying to find, find a solution. Yeah. And, and the solution may yeah. be nothing, right. It may be that right. this is sure. going to work, but you mm-hmm. know, if it got to this point where they delayed and, and, 80s are being written it's significant impact right sure so i guess you know what what are you on the i guess what are, what are your what are you thinking about in uh in going from here regarding this topic i mean what are you what are you keeping an eye out for i, I i'm i'm extremely excited that, uh, to see what's going to happen with business aviation okay i'm i'm, I'm happy mm-hmm. that i'm a i'm a large consumer of airlines and I'm very sure. happy that they are, you know, they're getting through that list. But we also need to think about it from a, from an aspect of, you know, what are we going to do with airplane or airplanes? And it's a lot of them. Right. And, and yeah. so that is my next thing. You know, that's my focus going forward. Um, I, I had a couple of airplanes coming out of um, um, pre-purchase inspections toward the end of last year, and. You know, and then the AD came out, and now, now I'm trying to get them. I'm trying to get somebody to sign off this AD. Um, they're not my airplane, so it's not really something I want to do. But right, you know, the the, the AFM uh, insert had to get in, and you know, everybody was like, well, "What what is this?" And, well, it's a it's a problem, but right now the problem, the solution is put this in the AFM. And, right, and and then it made a lot of people think and talk, and so. I just think we got to, gotcha. I got to wait, we got a ways to go. And, and sure. you know, and if we look at it from a rotorcraft, I'm not trying to, but the rotorcraft thing, and I'm not a rotor head at, by any means. I am, uh, I am fixed wing, have always been fixed wing, but rotorcraft do some amazing things, you know, yeah. and, and they have, uh, I don't know what the impact is to that because, you know, there's a lot of helicopters that land on, buildings for medevac right. and um i hope and you know they're they're running around usually at a lower altitude and i hope they've mm-hmm. got i hope somebody is really paying attention to that yeah yeah and they're not you know it's not like you can um you know i know with with uh you know commercial and some of the bigger airports there's these buffer zones around them but they're you know 
helicopters are flying everywhere. There's no, and they're usually not departing from an airport, right? So they're Correct. going from, you know, point A to point B, wherever that may be, onto the highway, into the mountains, you know, wherever. So um, definitely a lot more things to, to consider on that side. Yeah, and you, and, you know, the other thing, too, when you're thinking about it from, from the helicopter side of it, is that, you know, they're, they're talking about rural America. They're cranking it up. So the power mm-hmm. outputs of these things are going to be higher than what we're going to see in the, especially around airports, sure. right? And um, sure. there's a lot of rotorcraft going around. And, you know, if it's a commercial rotorcraft, you have a ra- radial attendant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if it's running, yeah. running commercial side of it, it's for real. It's happening. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I guess we'll we'll kind of see how this this pans out. I know the other thing that we originally wanted to talk about was around some of the changes and um, and I guess regulations or requirements around uh, MELs or MMELs. And so I know that y- you had mentioned that there's some changes coming with an advisory circular sometime soon. But maybe we could just paint a little bit of a picture on what's been going on and maybe what we can expect. And uh, maybe as as things change here in the near future, we could hop back on and, and discuss what that what that'll mean for uh, for operators. Absolutely. So the, the, the big thing that is popping up and has been coming along for the last couple of years is um, an MMEL technically is for TC aircraft so um so if you think about that you know there's a lot of avionics are installed via the type certificate data sheet and Mm -hmm. and and everything that is part of an aircraft on a green aircraft side is covered under the mmeo what the problem is now is stcs and the stcs are uh there's a lot of them uh, somewhere north of 75,000 different STCs. Right. And and it doesn't sound like that's a big deal, but when if you look in your MMEL on most business aircraft, um, there is a sign off or a, a relief item for passenger seats. The majority of passenger seats are installed by STC. So technically, that's not something that we can take um, advantage of on our MEO. So we MBA has been very, very open and honest with the FAA about this because they're, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've had a, I've, I do a lot of different aircraft reviews and I actually did a couple of G4s that had over 133 sevens. And in there was like 80 different STCs over time. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just passenger seats because in a, on a, a example, Gulfstream, Gulfstream puts every or had put every uh, every interior they ever did, from the G4s through the 550s and 650s, um, installed by STC. So that's a 1,500 airplanes in that area. Right. Um, but what I find more more. Um, impact is think about it from just the mandates that we've had over the last 20 years, you know, EG PWS, TCAS, um, TCAS 7.1 update. All of the majority of those are installed by STCs. Mm -hmm. So the FAA's theory is that, you know, we're just going to make, we're going to develop a, um, well, they're, they, have, they have developed an STC relief approval letter. So they're going to, they, they don't want non, or they do not want STC items in their MMELs. So they've come on with a different path. Currently, there's a lot of aircraft, you know, a lot of MMELs that have transponders in them. Well, we've had elementary Flight ID, enhanced flight ID, ADSB out, all this other stuff has happened. And mm-hmm. part numbers have been changed. And a lot of times the part numbers are changed by SCC. So technically you don't you, you can't take relief for it. And all of this is a significant problem going forward. Um, mm-hmm. and 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 it's gonna be a, a huge training event um, 
um, with the FAA and your FISDO and a, tr- and a, and a great training event with your op- our operators because you right now there you know most operations um, don't have a maintenance department it's like 75 percent um, and and I'm not saying that a two pilot flight department is unsafe at any means that's not my but do they know sure. what the paperwork means and, mm-hmm. and unless you're deep diving into this this is going to be an impact to that group so the F, the FAA has listened to us and, and some of our concerns, but I'm not sure that we're to a point that I have great confidence in the fact that this once this rolls out, which it's going to roll out, um, and, I, and, I, and I'll just throw it in there, I don't disagree with why they're doing it. Mm-hmm. I'm really disagreeing on their, how they're going to put it in. How? Yes, and that, mm-hmm. I don't get it. Um, but an AC is, is in, imminent on this because right now, um, AC 9167, which was kind of the Bible for us to, to take care of an MEL, um, is no longer useful. They've, they've removed it from an active AC. So that's what's going to be updated, and in there is going to be the plan. And hopefully the plan... Um, hopefully the plan can be um, easily easily implemented by the operator. But mm-hmm. it's, again, based on a whole bunch of conversations that I've had with FAA, I'm not so sure that that's going to be, that's not going to be an easy process. Mm-hmm. And so I guess some of the obstacles, just thinking, and I could be wrong on this, but some of the obstacles that... Um, operators could potentially see is going to be around you know i would imagine around older aircraft that have stcs that um you know the original holder is maybe no longer exists i don't know okay so i I think that's probably one of the the big problems and then the the process for um you know, new STCs that they're going to have to go through, you know, every time that something new is installed, that would be a lengthy process as well. Well, the, 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 the people out of business problem is a significant one. And one of the things mm-hmm. that the original AC came out, uh, the original revision came out with was that if there was the STC holder had to put the, put the paperwork in for an SDC okay. um, relief approval ladder, um, which, you know, that's fine. If you can, if you can find them, I, I gave, right. I, I gave them several examples of where that they're never going to find those people again. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one, I don't know that they've got resolved, but it is a, it is, it is, it is truly, um, it is truly a problem. Um, and what, I'm, I'm, what was your second question? Second part of that? Uh, the, the second one are, was, was around, you know, new STCs, gotcha. yep. and um, so, I don't know if that's a, as big of a problem or maybe not. Well, it is as big a problem in my eyes, right? So the mm-hmm. my eyes, it says that there is an STC process, and in the process, there is a path for an STC holder to go down and get this, but the FAA is not going to mandate that. Right. And so this will end up, end up being a... A consumer right because a lot of times you'll okay. see you'll see um adsb out was a perfectly good example there were that oem um at the um, service boltons that you know were very simple and off you go and and a lot of that was tc'd so um but they were also extremely pricey and then mm-hmm. we had a bunch of third party ones come in and good systems nothing wrong with the systems but um, they weren't too excited about that. And mm-hmm. I, if financially, I understand it, you know, um, and their prices are all a, a, a great deal lower than what the OEM is doing, but I, it's going to get to a point potentially that if you're putting in avionics mandated uh, avionics upgrades, you know, that's going it, to, it, there may not be a lot of difference and it may not make sense for, mm-hmm. 
for you going down a path of a third party. And, and, and that would be unfortunate because sometimes the third parties, STCs are a little bit more robust than what the OEM right. is putting out. So yeah, this is, this is a big, big mess. And one of the things that we just heard is that um, some of the older ones, um, when they first ta- started talking about this was, you know, you're done, you're not, we're not going to accept that. And we're mm-hmm. not going to go down that path. They're, they've kind of rethought that because there's a bunch of them um, and that they would allow the operator to um, submit it. And it's one of those things that we need to have, uh, we have to have checklist or something to help an operator do that. Um, and that's sure. one of the suggestions to the MBA maintenance committee is to, to work on that when we understand what they want. Um, but, you know, for, you know, for something that is 20, 30 years old, you know, and has done six or seven transactions, are you going to have all the data that you're going to need? And that's, right. to me, that's a huge problem. It's going to be tough. Yes. Yeah. And I see that all the time where, you know, I'll go through and grab the list and I'm looking through the paperwork and I don't see some of that data. You know? Yeah, sure. And so do you have an idea on timeline? I know that's usually pretty tough with, with the FAA, but. Well, it, it um, sounds like, um, based on the last conversation, that it is in their legal hands. Which okay. that can be that can be lengthy, but they feel sure. they feel confident that they're going to be able to um, get out a draft AC, um, and you know, ideally probably in the second quarter, but it may slip to third. Okay. But it's going to be it, it's going to be happening, and then, and that's the point when you know if you if you haven't signed up for um, advisory circulars on the FAA website, everybody needs to do that. So that when you see that draft that you can put your 10 cents in because you know, the impact to, um, all airplanes. And I mean, all of them, um, you know, I, I looked at a, a, a relatively new airplane that put a second, um, information or flight information system in. So it's kind of the box that keeps the, uh, charts and things. And they had right. installed it by SDC and versus uh, uh, SB. Mm. Mm. So now yeah. you got two of them, which is great because it becomes the becomes a um, electronic cockpit, right? That because you got one and they got the sure. backup. But yep. if one goes, you know, a you can't you couldn't technically yeah. leave, right? Especially if it's well. It, it definitely isn't going to allow you to leave if it's the STC item. And then your procedure mm-hmm. is going to have to change because, you know, you got to have a backup set up. Yeah. You got to have a backup plan again. So it just, it, 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 it's a, it, it makes sense. I kind of understand why they're doing this in one way and another way. I don't think they really thought about it. I, I mean, I'm going to babble. I'm not going to babble on forever, but I just saw another airplane that had ADC part number changes and they were installed by SDC. So mm. that means your air data yeah. computers are going to be, you're, you're not going to be able to do anything. And, and that, right. it, this is a, this is a significant impact. And, and, you know, we're trying to get the word out and I appreciate you give me a chance to do that because yeah, I think, sure. I think that that's a, that is a subject that is going to, to really, um, really become, um, such an impact and and if you look and, and you think about it and all the things that are involved with this thing you, you can look at passenger oxygen system emergency lighting systems um there's some pretty significant um systems in our airplanes um safety systems for communication through satcom right so yeah you know there's some things that kind of go out satcom that um, that are important to ATC and such, but you've already sure. updated your, you just updated to a KA system and your safety system sure. stuff is going out through that. Well, is that good or bad right now? I don't know. Right. So yeah, yeah. it's just a whole gamut of things you got to kind of consider. Yeah. A lot, a lot of different things to consider. So 
Um, I guess we'll uh, we'll keep an eye out. I, I guess a, a really important thing is for everybody who may be impacted by this, definitely keep an eye out for that draft and uh, so that you can provide feedback and comment on it. Um, and one and, more uh, thing with that yeah. is that, sure. you know, get your list together of SDC items. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. You can save yourself a great deal of time knowing exactly what is there and, and all the documents that are listed with that. So flight manual supplements, maintenance manual supplements, um, your wiring diagrams have all that kind of put together in a package so that right. you're a little bit preactive or proactive because really when yep. this hits, you know, of course, they're going to say, yeah, I've got to be done in a week. Um, yeah. But you can do that now and make sure that you have all that data. And if you don't, you know, go find it. Sure. So. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, I guess um, you know, as as we discussed, you know, as this comes out, we'll uh, we'll get back together. Maybe we could dig into some of the details and highlight some of the things that everybody should be aware of. Yep. But we'll uh, we'll keep an eye out for this new AC and uh, and take it from there. But I appreciate you coming on and, and talking about these few topics, and look forward to doing it again. Well, thanks, Greg. I appreciate it. I, um... I really do appreciate the awareness part of this thing because I think that's important yeah. for everybody. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we want to want to be able to get some of these messages out and have some open conversation about it. So I appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk soon. All righty. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>